Hi, I'm Chef Lynn. Welcome to the Flavor Secrets Kitchen. Today we're making one of my favorite things. It's one of my favorite things because it's so make-ahead. It can always be in your freezer and ready to go if you have people drop in or company coming in a few days. All you need to do is find an afternoon when you can make a lot of crepes, which is what we're doing today, or crepes, however you want to say it. Don't get me started on semantics. Um, and then you can have a nice, elegant meal ready in a flash. So actually, what I'm doing today is I'm going to show you how to make the crepes with no special equipment, just a little omelet pan, and I'm going to use some of my own leftovers to prepare lunch for whoever happens to be around today. All right, so the only thing I need to make fresh is some asparagus. I'm going to show you how to do an appetizer using the crepes, and then I'm also going to show you how to do an entree using bigger crepes. So I want to have some short pieces of asparagus, let's say maybe about that long, and then I want to have some long ones. So with these, I'll, I just want to think about how they'll fit on the plate, so I want to cut them about here. So think about your end use when you're trimming your asparagus. And then we'll cook those, get rid of these, and save these for later for another uh, make-ahead meal. I've got over here some water already boiling, and before it started to boil, I put in just a, a pinch of salt. That helps to bring out the flavor. So I'll drop the asparagus in there, and it'll only take a couple minutes for the asparagus to cook. I want to just be able to get a fork through the asparagus because it will continue cooking a little bit after I take it out. To stop that though, I have a bowl here with ice and water in it, and I can plunge it in there. This is called blanching, and then plunging it into icy water to stop the cooking so that it'll be cooked just perfectly the way that I like it. So actually, you can also see that the asparagus is turning a nice bright green from the boiling water, which is another plus for blanching. And these, this asparagus is so thin that I can already get my fork through it, and it's already done. So I'll take a little strainer here and pull out my asparagus and drop it in the cool water where it can wait for a few minutes. Now this is a, a way you can make your vegetables ahead of time at, on any day. You can do this in the morning before you take the kids to school, put it in the refrigerator, and then just heat, that, heat them up in a tiny little saucepan or, or um, frying pan with just a teeny tiny little bit of oil or butter and salt and pepper and you're good to go and you've got a hot vegetable. That's the hardest thing about the meal is getting the, ve <laughs> the vegetable. <laughs> is getting the vegetable uh, done at exactly the right time. All right, I guess maybe I should wipe this off. What I have here is a two ounce ladle, which is just about the right amount of batter to use to make a crepe. And I made the batter earlier for a good reason, because the batter needs to set for about a half an hour to calm down. So this is just like you when you're making pancakes. You make up the batter and then you let it set for 20 minutes or a half an hour before you fry it so that um, so that it'll be all settled down, it won't be so bubbly, and you won't get air holes in your pancakes. So let me give you the recipe. For this much crepe batter, which is, this bowl is about filled to here. This makes a lot of crepes, by the way. Probably 30 to 40 crepes. Um, so you can easily cut this recipe in half if you don't want to make that many. But I always make that many because you can let them cool and then stack them between pieces of waxed paper Put them in the freezer and then keep them ready to go for whenever you want them. They'll thaw out in half an hour and you can go ahead and have a, a really nice meal ready. Do let them cool before you stack them between the wax paper so they won't get soggy. And do stack them between wax paper because then you can take out just a few at a time. If they're all in one big frozen stack, you can't pack into that and get just the right amount of crepes you want. But if they're stacked between paper, you can take out one or two or three or twenty or whatever you need. So uh, once again, here's the recipe. I used a cup and a half of all-purpose flour, also called AP flour, to only two tablespoons of sugar. Now that reminds me to tell you that this is a savory crepe. By savory, I mean it's something that can be filled with meat, cheese, and savory items and to make an entree or, as I'm going to show you later, an appetizer. Um, it's not the kind of crepe that you would use to make something like crepe Suzette or a sweet dessert because in that crepe batter you want to have a lot more sugar or honey or carol syrup, carol syrup or something that will sweeten the batter more. Okay, so so far we have a cup and a half of AP flour, two tablespoons of sugar, so you mix that together, and then you add in six large eggs, 
two and a half cups of milk, and make sure it's whole milk. I mean, you can make, that, make it with low-fat milk if you want to, but um, it won't hurt it, but it won't have as much taste. So decide how many calories you want to add. A crepe doesn't, isn't a very big portion of this. As you can see, this much batter will make about 30. Okay, then you add a half teaspoon of salt. So once again, it's a cup and a half of AP flour, two tablespoons of sugar, two and a half cups of milk, six large eggs, and a half a teaspoon of salt. Mix that together and then let it sit for 20 to 30 minutes before you make your crepes. Okay, now first thing I want to do is get my pan hot. What I'm using here is just a little omelet pan. It happens to be a no-stick omelet pan. I don't use no or non-stick pans much at all because once you scratch them, then you have to throw them away. That's, then they're carcinogenous. But I do use it for crepes and omelets. Um, I find it helpful, and these little pans can be found at for ten or fifteen dollars. I think they're up to fifteen now. Um, in lots of kitchen supply stores, or if you're in an area where you have a Gordon Foods, they have really inex inexpensive omelet pans too. So if I scratch them, I just replace them. And then I also use a heat-resistant spatula. This, these Rubbermaid spatulas are good up to 400 degrees. So you can use them for sauteing, you can put them in hot pans. Now you can't just lay them in a hot pan, then they'll melt like any other spatula if, if you just leave them there. Like I said, they're only good up to 400 degrees. But for sauteing and, and using for this purpose, it's, it's just fine. Okay, now I'm going to coat this pan with a little bit of clarified butter. You don't have to go to the trouble for making clarified butter, but I wanted to cover that today anyway. Um, clarified butter is simply melted butter where you've taken away the milk solids because the milk solids are what burn. As you can see here, there are two components to butter. One is the yellow fat, and the other is this white, foamy, milk solid stuff that's on the top. So once I melt it, the milk solids rise to the top, and I can just skim it off like this, and what's left is clarified butter. And by taking the milk solids away, then I, I have raised the smoke point of my butter by 100 degrees. So it's really great now to use for sauteing or frying or something where you're going to have a really hot pan. Okay, I can hear my pan kind of clicking, so I know it's already really hot. I'm just going to take a pastry brush of this clarified butter and sort of season the pan with it. Now, you should know that often the, ver the first crepe doesn't come out, so I, I'll often just throw the first one away and then the pan will be properly seasoned. So don't feel badly and don't feel like you can't do it if your first one gets wrecked. Watch, I'll probably wreck this one. Okay, so I've just learned that two ounces is about the right amount for this pan, and it's smoking, so it's a little bit hot for crepe batter, which is a little bit tender. Okay, so I'll stir my batter up just a little bit without getting a lot of air into it. We don't want to get a lot of air into this batter. I'm letting my pan cool down a little bit by holding it up. And then I'll take my two, two ounces of batter, put it in the middle, and just swirl the pan until it meets the circle of the bottom of the pan. Then I can set it back on the heat, and I'm going to turn this heat down to medium high. Okay, if you have any little holes in your batter, just swirl the pan a little bit more and move that around until you've covered all of those holes. It doesn't really matter if you have a few little holes in there anyway. Okay, now you can see that just like with a pancake, this is really drying out, and that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the pancake to dry out, and I'm looking for a little bit of brown around the edges. As soon as I see that, then I can take my spatula and just kind of loosen up the edge, grab it with my fingers, and flip it. And there you've got a beautiful prep. Once you flip it, it'll just take a second to cook that other side, so you can actually even pull it off the heat. And then I just use my fingers, but I kind of have iron fingers from cooking for so many years. Um, I want the back of it to get just a little tiny bit brown, and it wasn't when I looked. So I'll, so I'll leave it in there for just another minute, and then I can slide it over here onto my wax paper to cool. Okay, and as I said, before you freeze them, make sure you cool them. I want it, now I don't have to add any more fat. I can just go ahead and go on with the second crep, which again is two ounces of batter. And then I'm just gonna swirl.
and if it gets a little bit big or your edges rip, don't worry about it because you fold a crepe up and you can decide to put that edge in the middle and underneath on the plate. So don't worry if your edges are a little raggedy or if you, like this one, is kind of went up on the sides a little bit too much. I don't care about that, it doesn't matter. Okay, so once again, I'm looking for the batter to be dry in the middle so that I can grab it and flip it. It's not something you can really use tongs with. There we go, we've got another nice brown one. And this one is sticking a little bit in the, to the pan until it heats up enough to move around. So I always check to make sure before I take it off that I can move the crepe in the pan. It's not quite brown on the bottom, so I'll just leave it until it's nice and cooked. We want our crepe to be a little bit brown because that's called caramelization. There is a little bit of sugar in here and it turns brown and it makes it taste better. It intensifies the taste. And we want to be careful not to burn it. And I'll just brush just a tiny little bit more clarified butter in there. You can use olive oil if you like or something like that. Now I need four crepes to do my little demo here so you can watch me make four crepes. They say that you have to tell people things three times and then they get it. So you're getting it four times. Swirl it around. Wait for it to dry out. So you can see here, if this makes 30 crepes, you can make 30 crepes in probably an hour, hour and a half, have them cooled and in the freezer, and then you've got them available. If you've got holidays coming up, it's fabulous because you can pull these out and make these little appetizers really fast, or as I said, you can come up with a lunch or dinner very quickly. Okay, I'm waiting for it to dry out, and it's almost there. <coughs> Excuse me. Going around the edge just to loosen it up. Letting it dry, there's just one little tiny edge, and you kind of, it starts to bubble up and you see little tiny like pinpoint holes too, and then you know it's done. Okay, so the whole thing is dry, so once again I'll flip it, let it finish cooking, and then move it over here onto my waxed paper to dry, and one last one. two ounces of crepe. Try and keep it in the bottom circle of the pan. Set it back on the heat. If you've got any little extraneous drips, just take your spatula and pull them out of there. Won't hurt anything if you don't, but I always like for things to be nice and neat. Okay, we're waiting for it to dry out. I'm looking for brown around the edges. The little bubbles are popping up. a little thick spot so even this late in the game I can move that around so it'll dry out quickly without burning the edges. It's nice and brown on the bottom. If they're getting too brown you can actually turn your heat off, turn it over. The pan is still hot remember. I've got the heat totally turned off and it's still cooking because the pan doesn't get immediately cool. It's ready when it, you can move it around by itself. While it's still wet, it'll still be a little bit sticky on the pan. See, now I can move it around. I'll leave it set there just a little bit longer to get brown. It doesn't hurt at all if you pick it up and look at it. And then, voila, we have four nice crepes. And as I said, make sure that you let them cool before you stack them and freeze them. And then if you do that, they'll be totally fine ready to go, almost like an instant lunch. I often pull them out if we've been on vacation or something and I need to make a quick meal and I don't have anything from the grocery store. I'll um, maybe scramble some eggs and put them inside or make a breakfast crepe and you can have a quick meal. Okay, so for our hors d'oeuvre, I'm going to choose the one that has the most raggedy edges because I'm going to make some cuts in this. All right. So these are different sized circles. You can find them at kitchen stores like Sur La Tabla or Williams Sonoma and I want to choose a size ring where I can get two or three hors d'oeuvres out of each crepe. And I kind of like that size ring right there. It's maybe, it's not quite as big as a cake ring, it's, about, it's maybe like two and a half inches around. So I'm going to come right to the edge 
and then press down and cut out some perfect little circles for my hors d'oeuvre. One, two, I can get three out of here. Then these little bits that are left over you can cut into little strips and put in soup. Um, I feed them to my dog. <laughs> my dog really likes them. They're not that bad for her. There's not much sugar in there and just um, a lot of egg and things like that. Okay, now I've got some Borsan cheese, and this is one that I really like, and i found that a lot of people like. It's called Borsan, B-O-U-R-S-I-N, and it's garlic and herbs. But you can use any kind of a spread, spreadable cheese. You can use goat cheese and sun-dried tomato, for example, if you don't like asparagus, or any kind of spreadable cheese that's easy to work with. Okay, so I'm just going to um, grab a... You could use a cake spatula, cake offset spatula for this, or even just a knife is fine. We need our three little pieces of asparagus here. So let's bring these out. Let's see, we can set these right here. Don't leave your uh, vegetables in the cold water very long, just for a couple minutes, okay? Just until they cool, because you don't want them to become soggy. But look at how beautiful, bright, what a beautiful bright green they are from having done this. Okay, so I want to use the, the three little pieces to show you my hors d'oeuvre. You can make these three or four hours ahead of, of a party, for example. All right, so I'm, now I'm going to choose which side of the crepe is the prettiest. That to me looks like the inside of the crepe, and this looks like the outside of the crepe. So I'll set those with the good side down, and then all I'm going to do is spread some Borsan cheese on the crab. And I'm going to bring it right to the edge because this will also be, this will also serve like glue to hold the little hors d'oeuvre together. Okay? Don't make it too thick or you won't be able to roll your crab up and you <laughs> it, won't, it won't hold together. Okay? So don't ask me how I know that. Alright, so again, right to the edge. A little bit thicker in the middle. And then, really, it just has to be on one edge, let's say, the right edge, pick one, because that, that will be on the outside and that will seal the appetizer together. Okay, right to the edge again. Oh, I'm showing you three times again, so I know you've got it. And very thin, bring it right out to the edge. Oops. Okay, now we're finished with the cheese, and again, a tub this size of cheese will make a lot of hors d'oeuvres. So now all I have to do is put my piece of asparagus in there and leave the beautiful part of it sticking out. Now we said the right side of it was going to be the glue, so I want to start right at the edge and roll this up like that. Leave the cut side down. The cheese will hold it together, but then place it on your plate, cut side down. Okay? And that is a beautiful, tasty hors d'oeuvre that I've had very good luck with. People really like it. On some occasions, I've put a very thin slice of salmon in there, too, and that's lovely. You can present it well because you can put it on a plate. Um, you can put it on a rectangular plate and pile up, make one row, and then make the second row in between each one on the top. And then put a garnish on it that's a different color. Like, for example, I often use very tiny chopped red pepper. And that is a delicious appetizer. Okay, so now let's say we want to use a whole crepe and we want it to be a dinner entree or something for lunch. For lunch I would probably give someone, I would give a lady probably only one crepe and, and a vegetable and a man maybe two or three depending on how much they like to eat. Um, for dinner entree I would give everyone three. Okay, so now you can see these are drying out and you can see how the wax paper has absorbed moisture. If you didn't let them cool and you froze them right away, I know I'm telling you again, i got to tell you three times, um, you're not going to be able to have them be in good shape when they come out of the freezer. Okay, so now I've got a whole crib here. And what I have here is some leftover chicken bits that from a chicken pot pie I made the other night. So I'm going to put that in the middle. And I'm remembering as I'm shaping this that we're going to fold this crepe over like that, right? So that tells me how much I can put in there. That's really a pretty full one. I won't be able to put much more than that. So we've got chicken. This is some leftover pepperonata that I made. Um, to make it, all you do is 
cut onion into julienne, cut red pepper into julienne, and saute them together until the onions turn brown. Now, most conventional ways for making caramelized onion like this will tell you to start out on high heat and then just keep stirring, stirring, stirring. I don't do that because I don't like to use the amount of oil that you have to use to do that. So I start my onions out on medium heat until they sweat enough so that I don't have to add oil. So these caramelized onions are made without oil, okay? And then you can just put them on low heat and let them keep cooking until they're brown and add the pepper in with them after the onions have, have started to get really soft. Okay, so now I'm gonna put this lovely pepperonata on here, caramelized onions and caramelized pepper. Not too much or I won't be able to close my crap. That might even be too much already. Then the other thing I made was, I, was um, oops, some gravy here. And the way I did this is kind of a cheater, easy way to make gravy. I took no fat chicken stock and I boiled it down to half. That took maybe, for the amount I had, it took maybe an hour to boil it down to half. That really intensifies the flavor. Then I still thickened it a little bit more using just a little bit of cornstarch and water mixed together, and then I let that cook a little bit more until it got thick. By the way, if you wanna check a sauce to see whether it's the right consistency or not, just take a, an empty plate and put some sauce on it and move it around and see how it acts. Then you can tell if you've gotten it thick enough. Okay, so to this gravy, did I tell you I added some spices also? I added some salt and some mixed pepper and a little bit of thyme, I think. You could also put onion in it or flavor it in any way that you want to. Pumpkin, use your imagination. Okay, so inside this crepe, again, use your imagination. You could have leftover shredded beef here. You could have, you could put some olives in there. You could put sun-dried tomatoes. You could put relish. You could put a little bit of mustard down the middle. I like to make a little strip of Dijon mustard just to give a little surprise to the crepe, just a little surprise heat. Okay, so now all I have to do, I could put a little bit of gravy inside, which I'll probably do. Let's put a little bit inside. Mm. Looks good, I'm getting hungry. And then I'm going to fold this over tightly and flip it quickly onto the plate. And there's a really pretty, nice lunch. Remember to always wipe off the rim, so make sure you don't have any drips or fingerprints or things that will be unappetizing when you present that at the table. And then, to heat it up a little bit, I'm going to add some gravy over the top. I had a little onion in this gravy too, I'm remembering now, because I can see it. And then always a little bit of garnish. That's a different color. And let's take a little bit of this red pepper here, too. Let's take a couple pieces of red pepper. I'm feeling like my little appetizer is looking a little plain, so I'm just going to chop that quickly and add it across my appetizer. Okay? If you wanted to, you could also take a little bit of pepper. Pepper always looks nice on a plate, and it fills in things you might have missed completes the whole picture, and then I've got this garnish of a different color. This is cilantro that I've chopped and double washed. If you don't know how to double wash cilantro or parsley to make it sprinkle like this, then you can watch the video at bloomfieldtwp.org under Flavor Secrets, and you can also find it um, on my site on YouTube. So there you can see it sprinkles beautifully because it's been double washed, and I'm just going to kind of let it go all over the plate. And there you are, you've got a beautiful entree that uses leftovers for those times when you're in a little pickle and you need something quick. I hope you give it a try. I'm Chef Lynn from the Flavor Secrets Kitchen. Enjoy.